Hello and welcome back to the Dual Screens podcast, the world's number one indie game dev interview show ever. Probably not likely. We hope so. It is joining us this week is Peter Tuff, the developer of Godstone. I love that name. A roguelike dungeon crawler in which you take the role of five different sorcerers to uncover the ancient Godstone, an instrument said to hold immense dark power. Peter, yes. welcome to the show. How's it going, buddy? Thank you. It's going really great. Yeah. I'm just uh, enjoying the weekend right now, mm-hmm. taking like a, a little, little relaxed day, and then mm-hmm. I'm going to head back into a new week of both studies and game development because I'm both a, a student at the Dania Games Academy here in Denmark, but I'm also working on my own game at the side. So it's it's a bit like two jobs at the same time. So for those who don't know, we spoke prior to recording. Peter is a baby. He's a child. Yes. He is he I am like <laughs> 20 years older than he is. <laughs> and he's and he's living the life I wish I had when I was his age. And uh this is also his first podcast, which I am very excited about and yes. also deeply apologetic for. <laughs> <laughs> so before we dive into Godstone, which looks and sounds and plays incredibly, demo out now on Steam, listeners. So check that out as soon as you possibly that can. Too. Please, please um, <laughs> you've been making games since you were you said since you were 13 years old in our discussion prior to slapping the old yes. record button. So I kind of want to get into that a little bit before we go into the game itself. What yeah. what pulled you into this industry? What made you want to develop games and pursue that as a career path um since i was very little uh i always played games i'm an absolute nerd i always have been and um one of the biggest drives i had was a bit bit classic you know but but i uh, always went down to my parents and told them that hey mom and dad when I grow up, I want to work for Blizzard. <laughs> and I want to make like the next Warcraft and stuff like that. We played a lot of Warcraft, a lot. Warcraft 2 was my childhood. So mm-hmm. that kind of like ignited the drive to make games. And I ended up searching online by myself how to make these games. And I ended up finding Game Maker. Mm-hmm. And back then, Game Maker was a lot like the same uh game maker one it has a game maker two now um but the fortunate thing about game maker was it was designed to let new people learn how to develop games fairly easy and it had a lot of youtube tutorials (laughs) so uh first time i picked game maker up was like uh i was not that old I, i think i was around that 12 13 years old uh mm-hmm. i made one sprite after figuring out how to do it and what buttons to press it was like the very beginning i made one sprite and then i gave up and i never touched it again <laughs> a while later there's like this this little spark again emerged and i got into game maker somewhat for real again and i started making like small games and i really really liked it Mm -hmm. every game sucked (laughs) and i trashed every game i made uh for years but (laughs) it it still taught me something you know Mm -hmm. and finally uh, one day i couldn't really understand hey why why do i have a no space on my pc left and i ended up searching through all my folders and i found this one folder (laughs) (laughs) i found this folder and it had like over 100 unfinished projects that i have started like over the course of over 100 over 100 and it was like a ton of gigabytes Uh, it was like it was like a realization okay i should probably actually also finish what i start you know <laughs> that could help um and i ended up making godstone or started working on it and in the beginning it was called the masters of Eptora until i found out that nobody could remember the name because it's long and it's weird i've already so forgotten it 
Yeah, exactly, exactly, precisely. So I had to come up with like a little just a bunch of words. <laughs> you made precisely. some sounds. And, <laughs> nothing says anything okay we have some masters we have something called the torah i don't know what that is i don't even know if i at that point even knew myself it's not even in the game <laughs> i'm i'm curious as to what these 100 game ideas were that were just unfinished like were they like completely different kinds of games and genres or were you just like different iterations of the same idea because to me, having a hundred different game ideas just hanging around in your back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, give me, generally... give me, give, give me some of them. Oh, I'm curious. Yeah, what were some sure, of the ideas I like, that are hanging all out? All of them had this. All of them had like the same theme. It was all mm -hmm. mostly always fantasy. Mm -hmm. You probably with fifty percent of them, you played as a wizard in some way. Like, like Love it. always the iteration of the <laughs> wizard. And I think it's also like a theme that has followed along into Godstone because you also play as a kind of wizards. Mm -hmm. um, I had like uh, Diablo inspired roguelike games also inspired from the Binding of Isaac, for example, which I ended up playing a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I also had some games that I actually finished and one of them were like this weird sci-fi game where you came from the left side and you had to shoot everything coming from the right side and all the code was terrible it was <laughs> terrible every <laughs> single speck of it <laughs> but it worked <laughs> are you and still using game maker now for your current project i actually just... am yeah wow it's like, like it's a it's a very childhood. good little tool isn't it it's very versatile it, it's it, it, it is. can get shit done uh, it can and it has a lot of add-ons unfortunately it also comes with a kind of a bad reputation mm -hmm. which is not justified in my opinion um it it has a lot of great tools it has a lot of great guides and you can make any kind of 2d game that you want ish uh, of course limitations to it but mm -hmm. still you know um and, and it's just nice. But whenever, you know, you say, oh, I make games, people are like, oh, cool. What engine do you use? And they'll be like, oh, I use Game Maker. <laughs> then, then they stop just... taking you seriously. Exactly. Just, <laughs> but listen, you, you, can know always it's coming. you can always point to a Listen, I've always pointed to games like Hyper Light Drifter was made entirely in Game Maker. That's like, <laughs> and look, look where that studio is today. And they started exactly. with Game Maker. So I wouldn't poo-poo on that. Tell your friends that they exactly. their asses and they know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, just, it's just the same thing with Undertale, for example. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah. a huge success and it's made in gaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let, let, so let's dive into the depths of Godstone. Uh, we learned yeah. a little bit of how it came to be with your 10 million projects that were never finished. <laughs> um, I'm curious to see why someone that because you're fairly younger than i am so you didn't really grow up in an era where 8 bit and 16 bit games were like the thing um no. i think we were, we were moving towards more 3d polygons you know ps1 mm. graphics at that point when you were you know being bored in the world um why did you settle on this specific art style this 2d sprite based it is because it it lends itself more to the yeah. game maker engine, or you wanted this mm. for a different reason entirely. It's um, I think it's a little bit of a childhood thing. Mm -hmm. uh, my graphics are very inspired by the, the old school style. Mm. It's it it can it's like it's kind of gritty in some areas, and it's all around this old RPG genre vibe around it and it i guess it's just because those are the games i always played when i was a kid and, mm -hmm. and they have always driven me and that's like when it comes to uh high resolution 3d games where everything looks completely realistic i'm just not attracted to it it's really? just not yeah exactly it's just like they'd be like oh my gosh these are the best graphics ever and it's so realistic and i'm just <laughs> sitting there like but this pixel game with like characters that only have eight pixels, look at it, <laughs> you know? And the gameplay is so much better. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just so much more drawn to mm. 
pixel art for some reason. And I think it's kind of like the nostalgia that I yeah. feel because I played those games. It's an art form too. You can't escape it. it I feel is. It's it's a it timeless really expression in the in the in the gaming sphere. And I really like that, you know, younger folks like you are still embracing the roots of gaming, like where it all came from with yeah. basic 2D pixel art and you're not letting it go. And your game looks bonkers. Like it is a pixel lover's dream come true. It looks insane. Tell us more about <laughs> what's going on in this game. What's the gameplay like in Godstone? What are we doing in this little I dungeon will. crawler of yours? So basically the game is this f fighting focused game where you can use various kinds of spells um with more spells coming to the game right now there are like fire and frost and a dark magic called neferon which you can use to obliterate enemies and there will be boss fights and these boss fights will be inspired by for example dark souls like the way they have made these bosses is something that i have drawn a lot into um and then i have also try to draw some inspiration from, for example, some of my childhood games, which are Diablo. And we mm -hmm. also have some elements from Path of Exile and Grim Dawn, where we have these items and you make like a teeny tiny build. And it's a tiny build because it's a roguelike. So mm -hmm. I don't want you to spend a ton of time making a huge build and then you die and you lose everything. Mm -hmm. There will be a permanent progression. There will be this skill tree where when you die, you will get points or some kind of currency to spend in this tree to permanently upgrade your characters. And in that way, you can make a pretty nice build, mm -hmm. but not lose it, <laughs> at least all <laughs> of it when you die, you know? So you get five items you can find, and these items are focused a lot on different kinds of resistances, different kind of damage types. And so we also have this combo system where you can set a um, cheer, you can, you can chill an enemy, for example, mm -hmm. and then you cast another spell that inflicts extra damage on enemies that are chilled. Mm -hmm. You also have things like combining frost and fire together, and then you get even bigger effects. So you can... Oh exactly so you can you get you get a lot of freedom to make different kinds sexy. of builds yeah i like that it's uh, it's it's, it's uh, pretty satisfying <laughs> at least in my opinion like, listen, <laughs> if, if i could have like a career path if wizard was a, was a job that someone could train and do i would do that <laughs> <laughs> any game involving casting spells or magic i'm immediately drawn to and when i saw that this game has like five different sorcerers it's all spell-based combat Mm -hmm. And the pixel art, and it's a rogue like. I was hot. can you can I have it now? Is it done? Is it ready? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically you can. There's a demo, and technically it's not is enough, dude. It's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough. I mean, I'm I'm working I'm working on it, and it's it's I I'm definitely crossing my fingers that it's gonna come out by the end of this year because I want to finish this game. And yes, you should finish a game out of the yes, hundred you've started. A game. <laughs> <laughs> it shall not be added to my giant folder. <laughs> what a what are the what are the kind of challenges you face with making a roguelike? Because there's a lot of competition out there in the genre, and yes. it seems like more than ever it's a it's a more popular gameplay style for developers to focus on and adapt mm -hmm. and include yeah. in their in their games. Um how do you make your stand out amongst the thousands of others that are out there just hanging around um, with more realistic graphics? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's such a difficult question because you, you need this kind of hook. Mm. And it's, it's difficult to know if you've got a hook until the game kind of comes out and it has been played by people and they feel like it has this hook. Mm -hmm. um, I have experienced a lot of people saying, I'm actually not very much into this genre, but this game is actually really fun and I'm sold on it and I actually want this game. So that's kind of encouraging uh, and a good indicator that maybe there is something to this game. 
Yeah, um, that's like the Hades effect where a lot of folks, I think, didn't exactly. know about the genre too much, but yeah. just love the presentation and the art style and the world and Precisely. the and the and the gameplay aspects. Mm -hmm. And then they sort of were like unknowingly turned into roguelike fans when they played that game for the first time. Yeah. And it was like Hades draws from a lot of already existing elements mm -hmm. and it draws from genres that already exist. It takes what already exists, mix it together in a new way and just delivers it really, really well. And you don't have to reinvent the next big genre for a game. You just have to mix things together, make something that's just, you know, a little bit unique and <laughs> make it make it really good. Uh, give it good gameplay. Uh, it's probably the most important part. So, yeah. Um, I have been told multiple times that on social media, when people see a post of my game, mm. they instantly recognize that it's from my game. Mm. So that's a benefit I have that my graphics are, according to other people, pretty unique and very recognizable. I get that told, especially on Reddit, for example. Mm. So that's also a really good indicator. It's the Godstone guy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. I'm also known as the frog guy. I made like these posts about frogs. Frog? I added frogs to the game and people just freaking loved them. And they're like, can you pet the frog? And I was like, yes, you can. <laughs> can you lick the frog? I think that's the more I important question <laughs> and you can have some effects if you lick specific frogs you can get some stat boosts or some like uh some debuffs now see now we're now we're designing and we're making your game yeah i will totally add that better or worse <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> after you beat a boss you get to lick one frog and you can either get a good buff or a bad buff <laughs> Take a chance. That could be so good. So weird, but so good. Where did the frogs come from? Why Why did you go with frogs? It seems That's very specific. It's, it's, it's a jungle area that you're in. And there's a lot of uh, swampy, foresty, watery, muddy areas. <laughs> so it just seems <laughs> fitting, you know? Frogs. Why not? Frogs. Are, are you handling like all... Are, are you doing all of the artwork yourself? Is this is this all you? Are you a, one, a solo dev, one-man team? This entire project? This is all me. Yeah, this Holy is uh, everything is made by me. Also, the music Amazing. and the sound, and of course, the art and programming and so on and so forth, for better or worse. Yeah. <laughs> I just love how at the beginning you started off saying how you drew a pixel art and it was shite. And now, like, this game... <laughs> I wouldn't imagine a game that looks like this that came from someone that said, I can't do pixel art for Dick. And here we are, <laughs> drawing frogs I mean, and making a yeah. unique art style that people recognize and they know it's you when they see it. <laughs> my uh, my my art style and uh, art skills have definitely grown since I first started, and also very recently, actually, something just happened, and my art has really improved, and it's very visible from the first area to the second area that is now made in the game not fully done but you know it works <laughs> um and there's like a huge gap in the visuals between those two and you can clearly see that mm. development how, how did you know that this was the game that you wanted to invest your time and effort and i would imagine also money because it's on it says on steam page that takes oh, yeah. a little bit of financial backing. So yeah. like, ha, ha, when did it click for you that this was the one that you wanted to focus on and put your efforts into and make it like your first big splash? Your first finished game. Hmm. <laughs> well, bringing it back to the wizard thing, that has definitely always been a genre that I've been sold by. So that's one of them. The other one is I've always made like roguelike games. So that's also... A genre that I really enjoy, and it's easy to make, uh, because is it it, it, <laughs> it require it gives a lot of replayability for way less work. You know, like if you had to make a linear story that people mm -hmm. only play through once, that would leave 
a lot more work for a shorter play time you know so mm -hmm. it's, it's like it's it's not easy to make but it's an easy way to add replayability -ish. right you can do you can do more with less in a roguelike than you can with a exactly. standard precise linear yeah yeah I also chose to make it a uh, platformer game specifically mm -hmm. because it's so much easier to animate. It takes way less sprites because you just need to make one and then just right. flip it <laughs> instead of making it like four to eight different directions. Oh God, you know? So yeah, that, that definitely makes it way easier. <laughs> How long does like a typical run last? How What does the start to finish look like in this game? Right now, in the first area, it takes about 15 minutes mm -hmm. to half an hour to complete the first uh, area. For me personally, it takes between 10 to 15 minutes. And for new players, it can take a little longer because they need to get used to the controls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The full game will probably take about an, an hour to complete, okay. like a full run. Maybe one hour and a half, depending on how much you choose to go through, because there will be um, these voluntary dungeons that you can go into in order to get other items, more powerful items, and also currency for the skill tree mm -hmm. in order to get even stronger permanently. So it varies. I love that. I love that when a game is short enough where I can finish it in maybe a sitting or two, and yeah. then I can, I can, I want to jump back immediately after finishing mm. it. Like when I first finished Returnal, one of my favorite roguelikes of all time, I think I just went back in because I was so hooked on that gameplay loop. That's so nice. Yeah. And this game, when I'm playing the demo, it has that similar kind of vibe of it where I know <laughs> what's going to get its hooks in me because it has a very addictive nature. So thank you That's and fuck nice. you at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's um when do you think now you said you're aiming for this year for this game to come out? Um yes. What 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 do you think would stand in your way of it not coming out this year? Because how like in the is it more just more polish you need to add? How much of the game is complete at this point? Because we got we got some months left in the year. We're still early on, um, hmm. but you must have some sort of like internal like in your brain a release date or a window at least. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, for a specific date, not really. Uh, mm -hmm. just just by the but end of yeah, the year. Okay. You know, the moment it's kind of ready, <laughs> I can say okay. I will set a release date now. I, I, I'm really careful with setting these deadlines and dates because I don't want to disappoint anyone. Mm -hmm. So when the game is ready-ish, mm -hmm. ready-ish, then I will make the release date and then, you know, I will put it out there. <laughs> and I am definitely crossing my fingers. It's by the end of this year. <laughs> how, how, I mean, I'm just super eager to play the full game at this point. So don't mind me. How, that is really nice. How, how that. how close to ready ish is the game? <laughs> <laughs> well, right now the game, uh, the base game is done. Mm -hmm. Um, the all the UI, all the menus, all the first area, the entire script for the enemies, and all that stuff. It's 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 done. Um, it's just a copy paste uh mm -hmm. moment right now where I'll when I make a new enemy, I'll just copy paste it from another enemy and do something to that makes it unique. Mm -hmm. but not too much because that will just add too much work. Mm -hmm. I have almost finished the second area. It only needs a bit of polish, a little bit of bug fixing and the final animations for the enemies. And then the final third area where you will face the final boss, of course, because it's a roguelike. Um, and I mean, that's basically it for the base game. We have the skill tree that I also need to make, and I'm already working on it. Uh, all the visuals for it are already mm -hmm. done. So, you know, it's just like putting all of these pieces of the puzzle that I mm -hmm. have already made together. And that's about it. So it's it's not that much that's, uh, that remains. Let's go a little bit into the 
the gameplay we touched on it earlier um the worst synergies come up a lot in roguelikes and builds go mm-hmm. through some of your favorite little tiny builds that you may come across in the game like this give us some examples of okay. the things we can expect so for example uh i am a big fan of the frost fire kind of synergy that you can make in the game mm-hmm. where you take the frost and the debuff it gives it gives a chill debuff and you take fire it gives this burn debuff and then there are items that say okay when you have chilled enemy that is also burning at the same time something happens and one of those things can be that it explodes and that explosion causes like missiles to pop out of it and explode otherwhere so it it has this exactly and it's very destructive and it's (laughs) so satisfying um and in that way you can make some really really yeah satisfying effects there's also a um the super items for the game are crowns for example and those Mm -hmm. are the ones that has the biggest effects and you want to as much as possible shape your build around the crown because that is the thing that triggers the strongest effects based on your other items and spells Mm -hmm. um one of those are is a crown that when a chilled enemy dies, it just explodes in these icy spikes that just spread across the entire room, depending on how much range you have. And it damages and chills other enemies. And if it successfully kills another enemy, it also chills them, which causes another explosion of these ice spikes. So it's just like a complete wave of just a chain death. reaction of icy death spikes. <laughs> exactly. And in that way, it's it's so broken right now. It, it definitely needs to be nerfed. <laughs> but, you know, you know, you get the idea. You can make some really destructive and pretty satisfying effects. Well, on that note of things being broken and nerfed, what is the difficulty like? I mean, again, for a rogue like the genre itself, I feel there's a certain level of difficulty you want to have because you want to push people yeah. to find the, the right build and the right synergies to make sure that they mm. are making the most of their run. How do you balance the difficulty and the abilities? What's your approach mm-hmm. to that? It is very difficult to balance. It requires so much play testing. It's insane. Um, fortunately, I have people to play test it. So that's definitely my number one approach. Um, we have found a bunch of very overpowered combinations you can make. <laughs> because certain items that are very broken uh so that's like you you get you get a really good idea of what is broken in the game and needs to be balanced Mm -hmm. but especially when you move to a higher difficulty i have this difficulty called uh insanity where inspired from a lot of uh Games like Diablo, Path of Exile, Grim Dawn, those three especially, like mm-hmm. uh, enemies that have special effects on them. Mm-hmm. It's It can be difficult to balance that out because it's random if they get this effect. So not only do you need to balance the entire, okay, are certain combinations of items overpowered, you also need to check, okay, are certain combinations of enemies with special effects mm. overpowered to the player? And yes. do they even have a chance to defeat them, you know? Because uh, it can give some very sour tastes in the mouth if they they just die and they feel like, okay, there was nothing I could do about that. <laughs> um, something I want to do inspired by... Uh, games such as Celeste is to add some more inclusivity in these difficulties. Mm -hmm. So I want to add a lot of freedom to those who choose to play the game. So if you want to play on a difficulty that suits what you want to play, you will be able to manipulate the difficulty a lot. Mm. You will be able to choose, okay, how much damage will enemies give? How much uh, damage do you yes, give? Yes, do you yes. get any bonuses mm-hmm. and stuff like that? You know, um, yeah, Dead Cells has that too. I believe you can modify like the percentage of damage and and like yeah. against enemies and what they what they do to you, which is nice Precisely. when you just want you just want to just go hog wild and be a god mm-hmm. for like a run. 
because you've had it exactly because <laughs> you're tired yeah, of you, you you're have tired to. of sucking for a little bit <laughs> exactly and also like if you like, i have experienced a bunch of people who have had difficulties with platforming and i was mm-hmm. like thinking i can make a setting that makes platforming more accessible to these people like um, i do have coyote coyote jump coyote timing what's that mm-hmm. called i don't i don't remember coyote? You no know, coyote <laughs> it's called coyote jumping it's like uh it, it, it's it's I've a heard this expression uh, before Coyote jumping? No, never. No. It's so good. It all games have it, all platforming at least. Um, it, it for example, when you look at uh, Celeste, it has uh-huh. this coyote time that originates from the old cartoons with I don't remember the name of it, but the bird and the coyote. What? Well, like oh, the Roadrunner and Wiley Coyote. Yes, I think. Yeah, yeah. he's always uh, trying to it, eat the. Exactly, beep, beep. and yeah. and. The name originates from that because when you come out um, like over a cliff, you know, Uh the coyote always has this amount of time where he's just in the air and he has time to jump again and move back. Yes, exactly. That's that's something that could be, for example, enhanced. Yeah. (laughs) Coyote time. I've never heard that before. (laughs) <laughs> it's like it's it's not a thing people really hear a lot it's just it's just there you know <laughs> it's it's a little, little little quality of life thing that mm-hmm. could be cool to modify if you need it mm-hmm. i mean you play a lot of roguelikes i imagine uh i do yes it's what led you to probably make this how difficult is it to keep all of that influence from impacting your design because i would imagine you're trying to make your own spin on things make it like it's your take yeah. on the roguelike but when there's so much mm-hmm. coming at you from so many amazing games it's like oh i should have done that or i could do it like they yeah. did how do you keep those from like interfering with the development process too it's much because you, you want so some inspiration different. yeah yeah exactly you want like inspiration, but you don't want to change your entire game mm-hmm. based on, oh my gosh, this cool game did that. Because the next game you're going to play, you're going to have the exact same experience. <laughs> so whatever you do, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm really trying not to. And the biggest, and also bringing back to if I can make it to by the end of this year, like the biggest blockage to do that is probably myself <laughs> mm. because i i have this habit of continuing to add more to it and oh mm. it needs more polish and you know but the most important thing is just to get it out there mm. even if it's not perfect because it's right. not gonna be perfect there'll always right. be something you can improve so and and especially also with what you just mentioned there will always be more ideas and it's just so dangerous to keep adding more <laughs> and scope creep. just because another game has it, you know, <laughs> and, and there's this phrase I love that's like called uh, kill your darling, which is yeah. if you have, yeah, exactly. If you love something, I've heard of this phrase, Not coyote jumping, but I've heard of this phrase. <laughs> oh, seriously. And it's, it's an amazing phrase. It's, it hurts so much, but you really need to kill your ideas if they just don't work <laughs> don't force them in there because it's yeah it's not gonna be great and well then, yeah <laughs> on that on that note i mean you know you have your sort of end of year internal deadline to get this out there mm. do you see yourself working on this past like let's say you get it out can you build mm. on it with like expansions or dlc yes have you thought about things like that for po- for post-launch content a lot mm-hmm. and every single time i stop myself from doing it right away <laughs> 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 i have a lot of ideas and i have a lot of stuff planned um which adds m- more replayability more choices as well mm-hmm. right now it's a lot from the left to right in the second area there will be a bunch of uh, optional dungeons three in total in each mm-hmm. run like tiny dungeons that always has a mini boss in the end stuff like that but I had to stop myself <laughs> from making even more <laughs> after that and, and wait with it 
for a DLC because otherwise I'm never going to finish. And I, I, I have to finish. <laughs> Man, it's a wonder to me how people with talent can even finish a game because if I had the ability to make a game like with the coding and the art pieces of it, which I possess no skill for whatsoever, I think I would just constantly be thinking of new things to make it better mm-hmm. and I would just never have a game. I just have a yeah. pile of ideas that never went anywhere. Exactly. That and just sounds good in theory. So, it, exactly. That to me and, is the best and, game in, in my own brain, but it would never be a game. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah, you need to you need to have this this red line and you need to focus yeah. on everything needs to be centered around the same theme. And if you try to focus on everything, it's it's uh, chances are it's not gonna be that great. Focus and, and I don't get along too well, Peter. So we're not <laughs> we're not good friends. <laughs> I have a focus issue. My condolences. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most focused I'll be all day. Is talking to you. Oh, Af- after that, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a blur. <laughs> well, it all sounds very exciting. I mean, again, the game looks amazing. Everyone, please go try it out wish list it looks great please do i need money he needs that (laughs) (laughs) all right so i wasn't gonna mention money but you brought it up so (laughs) without going into specifics because that's kind of an Mm -hmm. asshole move like give me the exact money you put in this game um how big of an investment has it been for you so far i mean to put this thing together and then with the steam elements and getting that page going Mm -hmm. Has it been like a chunk of life savings? Does all of your day job money go into this project? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's what does that look like without you know giving me specifics that I know how much money you put <laughs> so I can make plans? Well, actually, it's been to really pay cheap you to make a game for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me personally, it has been very cheap. Mm-hmm. Uh, good, good only- start, good start. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I can afford I, you, yes. <laughs> I I am very not expensive. <laughs> um, I love a cheap date. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me personally, it the only expenses I've had were to get it on Steam, mm-hmm. which will be refunded the moment you earn a thousand dollars. You Holy will get shit. All, yeah, exactly. Okay, the moment you earn. A specific amount of dollars. Mm-hmm. The amount of dollars you pay to get the game on Steam will be refunded, because oh, it's wow. just a way to ensure that not everything is uploaded to Steam. Got it. Yeah. Not that it has stopped that, but you know, yeah. still <laughs> helps prevent um, some of the garbage. Not all of it, but a good a good chunk of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's that's the biggest expense i've ever had and mm-hmm. i've used a lot of free software i paid for game maker mm-hmm. but that was back when i was about like 15 where i finally bought the full version of it and mm-hmm. that's it <laughs> that's it that's it all right and right now i use uh game maker one and i really need to upgrade to game maker two because game maker one is kind of outdated now mm-hmm. <laughs> But it's still working for my purposes, which are right. PC right now. I'm gonna, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be your first investor. I'm gonna invest in the games. I'm gonna, <laughs> I I'm, gonna I'm gonna fund Game Maker Two for you. <laughs> I would not mind. We're gonna have a dual screens pub- publisher credit in your next game. <laughs> oh man, it's a deal. Yes. <laughs> That, that's about it. That's actually it. Right. Um, that, that's actually reassuring. I feel like, you know, we've heard stories from a lot of indie devs um, who essentially they put like, they mortgage their houses to, mm-hmm. to get their game finished and they have all but $10 in the bank when mm-hmm. their game goes live and it's a whole thing. Um, yeah. But those are, you know, grown up problems and you're but a child who spent a thousand dollars to to make a game and put it on steam and <laughs> by the looks of it you're gonna get that money back and then some because it looks phenomenal and i cannot wait for this to come out it looks great and with that peter it's time to ask you some dumb shit that's right it yeah, is time for rapid it. fire <laughs> um so 
I say dumb shit, but the first question I want to ask you is not really dumb, but that's pretty serious. Um, because I'm always curious to see what other other indie devs uh think about this. Um, we've been seeing lately a lot of indie devs getting their hands on juicy, iconic IPs. You know, Dead Cell did a Castlevania DLC. Mm. You have uh, Bluebird, Annapurna, and No Code working on Silent Hill games. Mm -hmm. um, Cadence of Hyrule. Uh, another one. So if you had the chance, if someone said to you, Peter, we want you to make a brand new entry in the fill in the blank game, what franchise would that be? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I can choose anything? Anything you want. It's This is like someone, just a genie showed up or someone just oh, saw your I'm... game and said, you know, we want we want this guy to make the next Mega Man, the next Castlevania. So God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many ideas already. That's evil. <laughs> very. So maybe, yeah. Very... <laughs> Just give me one. Give me what, what what came what comes to what comes to your mind immediately. Okay, so the first game that came to mind, the first one, <laughs> like Dark Souls. Dark Souls is amazing. Oh, I man. love the genre and the ambience and the atmosphere and the mm -hmm. gameplay. It's so cool. But also Diablo. And mm. and Diablo has always been part of my childhood, and that's really something I would love to make. So, so, sidebar. Sidebar. Are you, sidebar. Are you excited for Diablo Four? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, I, I have I, not watched every single cinematic and recording I could find of it, and be like, oh, 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 oh. I'm, I'm just really hoping it can reclaim. The magic of Diablo 2 because yes. for me that was like the peak exactly the apex of that franchise three it, it, I and, enjoyed and... but a bit of a letdown in some ways mm. I'm hoping four can really bring it back to the magic exactly. that it once and was as it is right now it actually looks like it can pull it yeah and I'm really excited yeah. for it the graphics are amazing the atmosphere oh. <laughs> great <laughs> i just know what's the best part i love how you chose two franchises that have semi ultra nice polished realistic graphics <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> i mean you could do like a nice little sprite based dark souls that, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> kind of cool actually true. that'd be kind of yeah. cool i would i would pay yeah. good money for that um Same. all right <laughs> would you rather be the smartest person in the room or the funniest person in the room god damn <laughs> <laughs> hmm. i'm gonna have to drink on that no um, You know what? I like being smart. You like Actually, being smart. Yes, okay. I like saying being like I I I would love to be able to be that you know wise person that just sits at the end of the table, doesn't say much, but then when you speak, it's like oh, wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's called coyote jumping. What? Oh, uh, exactly. <laughs> oh, never heard of coyote jumping. <laughs> Um, <laughs> would you rather eat one food that you hate once a week and you have to eat it once a week, or would you never eat your favorite food ever again? <laughs> See, the, the, the bad food would be I have to eat wasabi. That's, ah. that's, that's, that's not really my thing. All right. So wasabi is not your thing. What's your favorite food? I actually your, don't have a to? favorite food. What's your go-to? What's your comfort? What's when you're having the long My comfort, is, though, is, is uh, lasagna, and it will always be lasagna. Right. So <laughs> you can either, you have to have wasabi once a week, or you can never have lasagna again. Which okay, of those You know what? I'm going to go with the wasabi, okay? Yep. One steals my lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a specific way you prepare your lasagna? 
because I'm a huge connoisseur of lasagna. I make it as often <laughs> as I possibly can. <laughs> and I try different ways, bechamel or, or ricotta mm. cheese. Um, what's How do you make your lasagna? How do you like your lasagna made? I like <laughs> to make everything from the ground up. Mm. Except for the pasta. I do not make the pasta from the ground up because mm. I don't know how to. <laughs> but <laughs> everything else, you know, the sauce, mm -hmm. especially I hate buying pre-made yeah. uh, stuff for it. Like the sauce, it's just uh, compared so, to when you make it homemade. Yeah, that's like the whole, you get the pot going early in the exactly. afternoon. It's low nice. simmer I like cooking. for like four or six <laughs> hours. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole exactly. house smells of that delicious meat sauce. Wow. Fuck, I'm getting hungry. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I already know the answer to the next question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. If you are what you eat, what are you? Is it a lasagna? I believe it is. <laughs> <laughs> if one of your colleagues or coworkers or loved ones received a phone call in the middle mm -hmm. of the night, Mm -hmm. They said, hello, so-and-so, um, I have some bad news, but Peter has been arrested and he's currently in jail and you must come bail him out. What uh -huh. crime did you commit? I love the deep thought. <laughs> <laughs> this is some serious questions i need the time to think about the, the wise replies because i need yeah, to be what do you think what crime do you think you're most likely to commit or just or you know a silly thing you would do and then you just get arrested for it god damn <laughs> what would, would, would that be to uh I don't. I don't know. I I consider consider starting watching anime, and I was like, hmm, I don't really want to pay for it. <laughs> oh, so you have a okay. So they found your terabytes of illegally downloaded exactly. material. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably be it, because mm -hmm. that that's literally the only thing I can imagine right now. <laughs> Sidebar: What is your favorite anime? What are you watching right now? I think it's actually, of course, it's uh, because Rogue likes, you know, it's mm -hmm. probably uh, Castlevania. Mm. It's, uh, oh, yeah. It's it's so good. I can't wait for the new season. Oh, there's a new season? There's going to be, well, they they finished the Trevor, like, <gasps> storyline. Oh, and they're doing, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. they're doing one based on Richter. I think it's coming out next year. Yes. Yeah. Please I'm give so, it to I'm me. I'm so excited for that. Or free. <laughs> <laughs> what is the dumbest way you've ever injured yourself? Okay, okay. So I was skiing. <laughs> Great start. <laughs> that is a good start. Um, so me and my uh brother uh, my youngest big brother we were both skiing together and there was this pillar uh iron pillar and it has like this this cover up to make it softer <laughs> you know it's, it's 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 not that softer but it's right. better than iron you know <laughs> and we we just we, you know the pillar was far away it was very easy to evade lots of space i wasn't that old you know and mm. my brother was like watch out there's this pillar right ahead i was like okay and i just like <laughs> smacked right into the pillar did you think he was saying hey you should smash your face into that pillar <laughs> Space. Like it's a pillar. Got it. You just like, <laughs> I, yeah. I, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's probably the dumbest way I ever injured myself. It's just <laughs> smack. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you think people notice the most about you when they see you for the first time? Peter what enters a room. Been, what I've been told. A is... wild Peter appears. What do I notice first? while peter appears i've been told that i am a very 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 happy person like i oh. s smile and laugh a lot so uh, yeah and i 100 do yeah yeah i get that energy from you 
Exactly. That's 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 definitely it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, just flying into a pillar face first, you know, with a big shit eating grin on your face. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I did what you asked. Bodily harm. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a nose? Uh, exactly. Again, I think I may also know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, Godstone is really, I'm going to paint the scenario for you. Godstone is released um, to massive critical and commercial success. It's going to happen, but we're just predicting there. Huge success. Everyone loves it. Sells a bajillion copies on Steam. And you're celebrating with mm. an excessive amount of alcohol <laughs> what word best describes you when you're drunk uh this but like times two an extra silly you're That's... even more happy and more yes. silly and uh <laughs> and I can, I, I can demonstrate <clears throat> <laughs> are you gonna take a couple shots right now and then I, 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 oh no is that well, what you're I drinking but... <laughs> 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 i'm just gonna write out Bring out the alcohol. Let's go. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I'm basically just extra silly and Love and it. very calm, actually. Mm. Like that, a lot of people who get uh, very over energetic or aggressive or anything. I'm just sitting there like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the best demonstration of me being drunk. <laughs> oh man! All right, I'm gonna ask you two more questions. And then we're going to get out of here. Okay. Bring it. Now, this one, I think you can have a nice, awkward, long pause after I ask you because it's, it requires, I think, some deep thought. So I'm going to ask you the question. Okay. My cup is ready. And if you need to to, to take a shot, if you need time to think, let me know. And then I'll ask you the last question, which I think would be a fast response. Um, If you could think about, some of your favorite games you've played in your throughout the course of your lifetime. Mm-hmm. If you could erase the memory of having played one of those favorite games and play it again for the first time, going in fresh and to experience the majesty and the wonder and the awe of said game mm-hmm. for the first mm-hmm. time, which game would that be? I'm actually thinking about. Skyrim. Really? Okay. Yeah, I am. That had a very special effect on me. Mm-hmm. I there, there was just some vibe about the world, and now it's 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 still there, but it's kind of gone because I played it for a lot of hours. Yeah, that's why it's a <laughs> surprising answer. I yeah. want to redo eight hundred hours of the game again. <laughs> exactly like oh oh I, I would like to forget everything about it and just experience the atmosphere of that world and play through college of winterhold for a 700th mm. time but without the memory of it yeah. <laughs> all right see look at that not that much yeah. thought you knew right away what you want to really say surprisingly fast I yeah know. and race yeah look at you you're the smartest <laughs> guy in the room um <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing I want to ask you is how do you think your first podcast went? I think it went pretty good. Yeah, I think it went okay. I'm lie. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It was actually really, really fun. <laughs> well, thank you so much, man. Uh it's been great having you on the show this week. You're a lot of fun to talk to. Uh, I can see why your game looks as amazing as it does. You're clearly a really passionate dude. And it shines through in the game and in you. Thank so you. <laughs> you have a bright spot in this industry, I think, for years to come. Is, if someone is your so age crazy. is this dedicated to making quality stuff, um, mm. listeners, watch this guy. He's going to go places. All right. It all started. <laughs> shitty oh, little the podcast. blush is real. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter, where can we follow you, the game? Give us all the marketing, social media, spiel, crap. You're right. You can follow me on Instagram and you can follow me on Twitter. I am known everywhere as Demented Plant. Mm-hmm. It's the best username ever. I tried to go for like a serious name, but I nah. 
gave up. Exactly. I was like, this no. doesn't sound like you at all. <laughs> exactly. I I'd something. be mad if you had a serious name. <laughs> exactly. Precisely. So, yeah, I, I, I am known as the Minute Plan. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Reddit. I'm also on Discord. I have my own Discord community. I would love for people to join there because it's 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 nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am <clears throat> planning some activities on the Discord oh. community. So it's oh. going to be really nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. I can also be followed on Twitch. And mm -hmm. I am planning on starting to do Twitch streaming every Tuesday and Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's also something coming up. All right. So yeah. And we'll throw all those links below for you guys to click, join, subscribe, follow, e bother, pester, poke, and prod our friend Peter Please here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Peter, for coming on our show. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. Thank you, listeners, Thank you so for tuning in this week on the Dual Screens podcast. And as always, please be excellent to each other. <laughs>